Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, today I have the Shelly Plus HNT out again um, because when I made the original video uh, I said that um, I'm going to revisit how the MQTT works on this one and um, I mean I looked at how the MQTT works on this one I set it up in Node-RED and it's been running for a couple of months and I well, I just only realized recently, uh, based on a comment, that I haven't made that video. So here it is. So I'm just going to talk about how you can configure the MQTT uh, in this device and how it looks like. I mean, it's not going to be awfully complicated, but at least you can see what uh, I have done with it, uh, you know, since I own this device. And by the way, I just checked the, um, the last video I did on this one was sorry last video the video that i did on the h t that was seven months ago so i have this product for seven months now so for the first what i think i'm going to do is let put this aside is i'm going to pull up my phone and head into the shelly app and um, so you should be here in my test room shelly h t plus plus yeah and you can see here and uh, oh by the way i just wanted to mention that uh, this is still running the same battery that I installed seven months ago. And it says that the battery is at 88%. So maybe that's going to give you some indication of how long it is working. So quickly, I just want to talk about the, um, the various, um, you know, details because uh, the, okay, it's not the offset, but it's the, th uh, the threshold. So what, the way you can configure this unit, because obviously it works on, uh, well, it works on Wi-Fi, but it runs on battery. So, um, you have some settings in order to um, minimize the battery use and and um, increase the battery life. So there is this uh, temperature and humidity threshold, which means that if, for example, here, if the temperature changes by half a degree or if the humidity changes by five degrees, then it's going to report the status. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, sleeping. And because it has the e-ink display on it, uh, well, that is not going to draw any current. So it updates the screen and then it can go to sleep, which is what it does. Okay, so that's the um, that was the things that I explained in the previous video, but I thought it just uh, it's a good idea to mention. But in order to configure the MQTT, you go over to networks and then you go to MQTT. And because this is the plus line, which uses an ESP32 in all of the plus line of uh, Shelley's. Um, you can use the cloud and MQTT at the same time. I think previously it was either either or. So you either had a cloud or some sort of local connection. But now we can use both. And actually it is, you know, fairly simple because uh, you configure the, well, you check that uh, you want the MQTT connection to enable. And then you can, you know, sec the, select the connection type. I'm connecting to my local MQTT server. So I'm using simple MQTT, not MQTTS. And then you specify a base topic like, you know, Shelly plus T, sorry, Shelly plus HT. And now you have the option to um, use this RPC status notification or the, uh, the generic status update. And to be honest, I, uh, maybe we can check both of them, but I, um, I like the RPC one because uh, that seems to send one message with a lot of information in it. I mean, it sends up quite a big JSON. But at least everything is in one message, so I don't have to look for in various different language. Uh, sorry, uh, not language messages. Um, so everything is there. It's easier to process. It's easier to put into database. So that's the main reason. And then on the rest of the screen, you specify your server, your username, and a password. So the the server is the IP of the of your MQTT server. And if you're not using uh, secure, then the default port is 1883. So it's the IP colon 1883, and obviously user ID and uh, user ID and password. And then you apply the changes. I just realized I needed to re-record this section because my face was blocking the view of the data. So uh, we have seen how the MQTT details get configured, and uh, if you remember, I configured both of these RPC and the status messages, and now we can see that uh, it, the information is getting published under the uh, Shelly plus HT topic. And I have uh, two status, uh, well, well, two other topics behind, be below that. One is the, the event and the RPC. 
and this is where all the RPC updates are getting sent. So this is uh, basically like uh, it's always this topic and then it, it sends one big message with a big JSON which contains pretty much everything. We are going to see it later. And then under the status, there are a bunch of other status, uh, sorry, under the status topic, there are a bunch of other topics as well. Um, so if you are interested in just certain information, then you can subscribe to these instead, so you don't get all the data. But if you only want, let's say, the humidity, you can subscribe to this or the temperature. But that is still getting sent as a JSON. So, <clears throat> I mean, of course, you get information like, you know, whether the BLE is on, whether it's connected to the cloud and, you know, system information and the Wi-Fi information and whatever. But uh, the one thing that I think it's probably interesting is under the device power colon zero so that's the name of the topic um and you can see study uh, shelly plus ht slash says slash device power uh, uh, colon zero and then within that you have a battery dot percent so that's the battery percentage and um and then you have the humidity colon zero uh, which again it shows the dot rh is the relative humidity and then for the temperature, it's called the temperature slash, or sorry, colon zero. And then as you can see, there are two data. So well, besides the ID, there is a TC and the TF. So this is temperature centigrade and temperature Fahrenheit. So you can, it automatically calculates you the two different temperatures. You can just get whatever you want. So that's the, those are the statuses. So if you click the status, you will get this. And if you click the RPC, you get this other one. And the only, and to be honest, I'm using the RPC because I favor getting all of the information in one single topic, in one single message, uh, because it's much easier to process that way, save the information into uh, InfluxDB. So I just prefer that. But I wanted to show you both methods, uh, and then you can decide which one you like better. And in the uh, RPC, you get messages and then the one thing that you have to look for is the method inside because there are a couple of different events that uh, the this um, rpc method generates so there are events when for example the device is going to sleep there are other events when yeah it was going to sleep again and uh, uh yeah whether it's connected to the cloud and then some other bits and pieces. And then finally, at some point, it is also going to send you this type of message where the method is notify full status. And only within that, you are getting everything. Uh, well, everything in terms of the you know sensor readings. So you can see here that, um, so the method is notify full status. And then it has another attribute or field, which is called a params. And then within that, you get like pretty much everything that you see under status. So you can see that there is a device power, which has the same structure as before. So device power colon zero dot battery dot percent is going to give you the percentage. And also if you need the humidity, there is also a humidity colon zero and then uh, dot RH, the relative humidity, and the temperature is going to be here somewhere as well. Uh, if I scroll further down, yeah, temperature colon zero and then TC. So this is how I get the temperature. So it is all there. You can use it either way. And when I'm going to show you the node red flow, you're going to see that I'm using the RPC topic. So I only enable this status topic just for you to see, but I'm absolutely fine using the RPC. But then in the RPC, you just have to filter based on the method and then well, I only look at the notify full status and uh, basically just ignore anything else. And then uh, the only other discrepancy I would, uh, I would, well, sorry, the difference I would say is that when I recorded the last of the uh, the video, then the the topic was slightly different. So I've already updated the topic, Shelly plus HT. So you can see that the it's Shelly plus HT slash events slash RPC, but previously was slightly different. So this is what you're going to see in the rest of the video. Just wanted to clear that. And uh, I just quickly wanted to show you what I do with this information. So I created a very simple flow. I just wanted to monitor this. And of course, just wanted to see how the interval looks like. Um, so I created an MQTT in node and I subscribe to this uh, Shelly plus HT uh, dash the ID slash events slash rpc topic and i specify that this is going to be a json payload 
and then I created a very simple switch node which uh, looks into the message.payload.method. So again, if you remember, the, um, the method says notify full status. So if that is notify full status, then the message goes out on the first port. Otherwise, it goes out on the second port, which I don't care. So I don't do anything with it. And I convert this message into an influx uh, query. So I created a, a measurement, which is called the Shelly, because I collect uh, data from my, a few of my other Shellys. So the, uh, the, I created a tag uh, called device, so the plus H and T, and then it has a couple of fields. So temperature, humidity, and a battery. And as you can see, the value is message.payload.params. Well, it would have been dot temperature colon zero, but uh, JavaScript doesn't uh, accept the, you know, the field value with a colon in it. So I had to use this notation as in like square brackets and then um, what is it? Quote marks uh, temperature dot, sorry, temperature colon zero dot TC. So this is the temperature in Celsius and the dot RH is the relative humidity and the battery percentage is uh, message dot payload dot params device power colon zero and dot battery dot percent. So I load it into these three fields and off it goes into a uh, bucket which is called a log in my influx. Well, the only reason I created a separate bucket because uh, I decided that, I mean, I use it for monitoring purposes. I don't want to store it long term. So I think this log bucket, it, it deletes itself after 90 days. So if I go into influx, you can see that it's uh, Sherry. And then I filter on device. I have the Sherry motion too and the plus HT. And then, yeah, I have all this information. So if I do like, hmm, well, I'm not going to do a go past more than two days. Uh, the only reason for that, because um, I mentioned in one of my previous video that my influx DB has died and I just managed to restart it. And so that just happened two days ago. So I don't have more information than the last two days. But um, yeah, you can see it here. I mean, if I focus on the, uh, sorry, if I just only want to show the battery, I mean, we are all going to see a lot because, uh, you know, that's been 88 since the last two days. If I do humidity, I'm guessing we will see more changes here uh, because um, I just did this hand warming thing. So that obviously raised the humidity and then it come back and now it's going up again as well. But uh, at least you can clearly see now how the, uh, the update keeps that um, uh, settings in mind. So obviously, for the humidity and for the humidity you would get in, you will get more updates than the five percent or the five yeah the five percent difference because whenever the temperature changes by one and a half uh, sorry half a degree in my case well it's not only going to send the temperature update it will just send everything so you can see that uh, here is 41.4 40.9 uh, so that's definitely less uh, than five percent change but then probably there was a bigger temperature change at the same time. So you don't get an awful lot of readings, but I think these readings still, you know, quite accurately describe the changes, for example, in the temp in the humidity. And if I change the temperature, we are going to see pretty much the same as well. So you can see that, yeah. So obviously, as soon as the temperature rises, you will get an update and uh, uh, you know, it looks a little bit bulky, but even if you have more readings in the middle, it wouldn't give you much more information. So it really works. Uh, you can see that I got an update at 8 o'clock in the morning. The next one came, well, 8 o'clock in the evening. And as you can see, the temperature hardly changed in the room. So it was changed by 0.1 degrees. Um, and then there was a little bit of, yeah, going up. So here from 8 to 10.20, and then the next one was uh, half an hour past midnight. Yeah, and then it recorded as the temperature has settled back. And then it became a little bit warmer in the morning. Maybe there was the sun was out. So I think it works. I mean, yeah, it's a battery powered device. You don't want frequent updates. And if the thing doesn't change anyway, then, you know, what's the point of just storing more information? So I think that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, after all, 
you configure the MQTT settings and it sends update and it sends update into this um, a little bit complicated RPC format, but all the information is there. You can just pick whatever you need and then you can just ignore the rest. And I think nowadays every home automation system, whether it's, you know, home assistant or anything else would be able to handle with, uh, well, would be able to handle topics which have a bunch of data coming in JSON format. So just like as I pick uh, the details in Node-RED using, you know, for example, in my change, sorry, in my function node, you can do the same in a change node as well, and you can get these various parameters out of the, uh, the JSON payload. So I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching, and hopefully see you in the next video.